All right, welcome back. Now that we have covered some of the web view stuff, we're going to get into one of the frameworks that I like to use. Preact JS is a smaller version of React. And to get started with it, it's actually quite simple. So first thing we're going to need is to download version 8.5.2, okay? And this is really important because the latest versions apparently do not work, especially because we have a non-ES6 type of environment. So 8.5.2 is the one that we're going to be using. So you'll see a bunch of these links here after you search for it uh, at cdnjs.com. And the one that we want is this one right here. So we're actually just going to go to it. And then we're just going to save this page, this page with all of this weird looking um, push together code. And we're going to save that right inside of our HTML folder. So we save that and we can close out of all this other stuff. And we have the index open here. So in order for us to interact and start with Preact, uh, we need to load it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a script here. Its source is just going to be preactmin.js. And then that's basically it. And now we're going to get rid of this little tag here. And we're going to call this a div. And we're going to give it an ID of render. And this is all we need for the HTML. So we're never going to touch this part of the document uh, pretty much ever again, uh, unless we're adding like uh, CSS styling or something else. But this is how our HTML is going to look from this point forward. All the HTML that we write will actually be inside of app.js. So let me briefly explain how we start with React. So we're going to make some space up here because we're going to need it. <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and load Preact. So there's a few things that we pretty much always load. One of them is called create element, one of them is called render, and one of them is called component. And then we have to load these from the Preact interface, okay? And one of the things that Preact likes to do, and they even say this in their documentation, they like to bind create element to the letter H. So we're going to do that as well. So we're going to do const H equals create element, just like that. And now we have the first part of our little um, Preact setup. So in order for us to begin with Preact, we need to render something. And the easiest way to explain it is, <laughs> well, there's no easy way to explain it. Let's be realistic here. So we'll start off by writing a class. So we're going to write this class and we're going to call it app and, it, we're gonna, and it's going to it's going to extend the component class. OK, so give me a second to kind of explain all of this as we go along. We'll set up a very basic example and then we'll explain more about it. So we're going to set up a constructor here and in the constructor, it always contains props. OK, and we're just going to super props. All right. And inside of this, we set up a state. It's just an object, so we're just going to leave it just like that, okay? And we'll talk more about state when we get to it. And then down here at the bottom, we need to add a render component. So if we do render as a function, and then we're going to do return h, and we're going to do an h1 element. So h basically means we're creating a div, an h1, a paragraph, anything HTML related, we create it in here. This is what um, the easiest way to think of it is this is basically HTML, but without the div, without all the tags, without all the without all these. So instead of doing this, you do this. OK. And right here, we're just going to keep that as a object and we're going to say hello from React. All right. So. Now what we need to do is render this specific class onto this ID called render. Okay. So in order to do that, we use render. So render is a function that's included with Preact and it targets a very specific um, ID that you provide it. So in this example, 
we're going to be taking the class of app, which is this one right here, and we're going to render it onto the document, and we're going to look up the ID for render. So we're going to do document, query selector, and then we're going to find render. And this means ID, if you weren't aware. That is something that we do with um, CSS. So in order to really make sure this works, I'm actually just going to comment out the rest of the stuff that's here. And we're going to go to our page and see if it loads. As you can see, hello from Preact. So that means that we now have Preact working for us, which is a wonderful thing to know. And now we can actually start working with Preact. So let's take what we did in the last lecture and we're going to build it inside of Preact. So one of the things that we would like to do is render the player's display name. So we're going to start with that. And in order to do that, we have to work with state. Now, state is this weird black box that people talk about, and they've always had this weird understanding of it, and it's been hard to understand for new programmers. But let me put it in a way that hopefully will make the most sense to you. The state is literally something that we can access specifically inside of this class that can be rendered and manipulated all over the place. So. We're going to add a, an additional function here that's going to be called did com, or component did mount. Component did mount. Okay. And when this function is called is after it's been bound to the HTML window. So a good way to put it is if I put a console log in here and I do ready and I refresh, it's pretty much instant. Um, so what I want to do is I want to display a, t like a, a name, okay? So if I do if alt in window here, okay? And I'm gonna do an else statement here, and I'm gonna put a little comment there to comment that out for now. We need to manipulate the state to work with this. So I'm gonna put an entry inside of the state object that says name. Okay, and we're going to put down Johnny Ringo. And I want to change that name. And in order to change that name, we need to do set state. So if I do this dot set state, we can modify the state by opening up the object, assigning this variable. Okay, so now we're inside of state here. And we assign the new name of Johnny cash okay now when I refresh this it will stay it um, when I refresh this or the page it's actually still gonna say hello from preact so we actually need to make it say what this state reflects so in this render function we're gonna change this to the what the state says and we can do that by doing this state name so we're going this state name, okay? So there's kind of a pattern there, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna refresh, and as you can see, it says John Cash. In order to really show you how this works, even more so, we're gonna add a timeout here, okay? So we're gonna do set timeout, and we're gonna set this for in five seconds, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and paste this right there. And in five seconds, you're gonna see it change from Johnny Ringo to Johnny Cash. And there it is. And as you can see, it's updated the page for me and I haven't had to do anything. So the power of this is that all of this data can be manipulated on the fly, which is really, really cool. So we're gonna stop here for this lecture. And in the next one, we're gonna hook up the rest of our functionality so you can get a better understanding of how Preact really works.